Hello, this video is learning to see the values on the sphere and learn to use the five value system to draw or paint other similar round objects. Many things it's wrong in this world, like related to humans, including head, nose, deltoid muscles, etc. Fruit. Many fruits are roundish, isn't it? And tool, toy, and many more. As we see, the picture has a lots of gray color on the back. So that's why I will prime the gray color, a light gray color, on the whole canvas first before I draw the outlines. I draw a cross to help me draw this circle. Um, you can say that is the plus sign or is two equal diameter across right on the center point. After I draw the outlines, I fill in the dark gray color on the shadow area. So what is the five value system in art? How are we going to use this system to draw or paint? If I define this five value system in the simple way is an art theory help us to see the light and dark on all objects. This is an acrylic painting, so I will use a, a floating medium like this one from Fox Art to smooth out the paint. If you only use the water to thinning out the paint, um, sometimes it's okay, but keep this in mind, the water will thinning out the adhesive in the paint also so sometimes the paint will not easy to stick on your canvas. So I will prefer to use this floating medium as my thinner for this paint. Learn to see the subtle change of the value. It's very important because sometimes the value, it just slightly shift a little bit, but we can't ignore it. To draw realistically, value is the key. Value is everything. So the five value systems, it's very important to know to draw realistically. So far, I only use gray and white to paint the background, draw the outlines, and the shadows. Can you see the subtle change of the background? The foreground is a little bit brighter than the background. Can you find the highlight on the ball and the apple? Which is, is the brightest part on the object? And where do you think is the darkest part on the painting? Is the shadow on the object? or is the shadow on a table. Now I add the black colors to darken the shadow area. If you just learn to paint acrylic, so you should pay attention to see how and when I clean the brushes. Because sometimes when you're blending the color or smooth out the color, your brush need to be clean and dry. Now you see I am painting the brightest part of the ball 
which is called highlight, and the area surrounding the highlight is called light tones. And after the light tones, between the light tone and to the quad shadow, which is the very dark moon shade shadow on the object, between the quad shadow and the light shadow is the mid tone. So we need to very be careful to draw the mid tone. Mid tone looks like very similar value to the light tone, but it's a little bit darker. So the highlight is the brightest part, then the light tone is a little bit darker, and the mid tone is more darker. When we're painting the transaction from the mid tone to the quad shadow, we need to be careful because um, it seems like it have a, a lot of a sudden change from light to dark but we do still need to paint a small transaction from the light to dark. Now I am painting the cast shadow, which is the shadow on the table. The hardest part is to see the reflect light. Can you tell where is the reflect light? Reflect light is right between the quad shadow and the cast shadow. Can you find it? To draw or paint the reflect light, one thing it's very important to know, the reflect light it's not dark as the quad shadow, also it's not dark as like the cast shadow. Can you find the reflect light on the ball and on the apple too? So now you are seeing I am painting the quad shadow and refining the edges on the cast shadow. So what do you think? Is the cast shadow darker or is the quad shadow darker? The answer is we supposed to draw the quad shadow darker than the cast shadow. Take a real good look on the pictures. Sometimes in the picture, it's a little bit hard to tell the dark and light. And the best thing is if you have a ball in the house, put the light 45 degree shining on your ball and take a good look on the shadows. You will find out the quad shadow is the darkest. Can you tell on the bottom of the quad shadow, the value has shift a little bit. It's a little bit lighter. As you see, I am painting the background. Can you tell how the value changed from the left to the right? 
because the light is shining to the object from the right to the left. So can you tell the right side of the picture is brighter? So then we need to pay attention to paint the background is lighter on the right side and a little bit darker on the left side. So I am painting the reflected light now. So just a reminder, a reflected light is gonna be a little bit lighter than the quad shadow and the cast shadow. Now let's use the knowledge that we have learned from painting the sphere to paint the apple because apple it's also it's a roundish object has the similar shadow like the sphere for your practice if you don't have an apple or you don't want to paint an apple you are very welcome to find other roundish object to practice this method. As long as you understand this fire value systems, uh, this theory and the painting method, you are good to go. Thank you so much for watching. To see the full video of this step-by-step -step tutorial, you can join and become my Patreon member or go visit rbfineartstudio.com for more options. There are much more videos and live online art classes available in the website and in my Patreon pages. If you like my video, please click the like button for support. Or if you like to see more of my video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel under Iwen Chen. Um, I will update my new video each week. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.